Hello Overclockers, I'm 8pack, a professional overclocker based here at Overclockers UK. In this video, what I'm going to be talking about is the new 14900KS CPU by Intel. And what I'm going to be doing is testing this CPU in terms of stock performance, TDP and power output, what cooling you need and overall cooling performance, and then of course any recommendations I have for tuning the CPU to give better performance through overclocking. So, all that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so we've introduced the CPU that we're gonna be talking about here, that's the 14900KS. Firstly, let's talk a little bit about this processor. When you're comparing it to the i9-14900K, this new version, the 14900KS, has exactly the same number of performance cores, which is eight. Those all have hyper-threading and it has this, exactly the same number of efficiency cores, which is 16. These cores are clocked at a much lower frequency than the performance cores and do not have hyperthreading. So essentially the 14900K equals the 14900KS in terms of cores and indeed architecture. The only real difference between two CPUs is the higher boost clock out of the box uh, on the KS version, which is 6.2 gigahertz versus six gigahertz straight. So you've got a 200 megahertz uplift for the KS CPU. Now, according to Intel's uh, spec, this means that at stock, the K has a TDP of 125 watts and the KS has a TDP of 150 watts. However, when I was testing uh, using the boost algorithms at complete stock, I found that the 14900K uh, gave 355 watts maximum power draw, whereas the KS has a 405 watts uh, maximum power draw. Basically, obviously, this translates into you needing uh, a better PSU uh, and better cooling to keep the KS version cool and benefit from the extra frequency. Both of these CPUs uh, can be installed in the same platform, so Z790 on a socket 1700 board. And I suggest that obviously if you are going to use the KS, that you update the BIOS on your motherboard in line uh, with the KS uh, voltage table uh, to allow for the absolute maximum performance. So what was the test system specs when I was uh, testing this CPU? What I used was uh, the Asus Dark Hero Z790 motherboard on the latest BIOS. I used the 14900KS CPU with a custom water cooling loop. Now, normally I do these videos initially with an AIO cooler, but with 405 watts of stock power needed, the AIO was really being pushed too hard and the CPU was uh, thermal throttling quite quickly. So I decided to quickly go straight into the custom loop. Uh, this custom loop had a quad radiator, uh, a Nexlus pump, uh, and an EK water block. Uh, just the standard Velocity 2 water block. What I was using uh, for testing was Team Group 7600 megahertz memory with the memory set at XMP. I was using my standard Windows 11 install with all the latest drivers for the motherboard, the chipset, the IO, uh, and of course the GPU as well as the GPU is important within the gaming or the 3D testing. Now we've covered the test system. Let's go into what the stock results were and the stock BIOS settings. Now I, when I say stock BIOS settings, I mean absolutely everything stock default BIOS with just XMP enabled. So the only thing different to that could be different in your system was your memory speed. And here I was running 7600 megahertz team group memory, 32 gig capacitor. So what were the stock results then? 14900K versus 14900KS. On our OCUK Blender test, uh, on this KS CPU took one hour, one minute, uh, which was a 3% improvement over the K. Our 3D Mark Firestrike uh, physics test, and this was at 1080p, uh, scored a 6.7% improvement over the K. The Firestrike uh, graphics test, which is again at 1080p, uh, scored an 8% improvement over the K. Uh, Cinebench R23 on multi-core was a 7.8% improvement over the K, with single core rocking about a 3% improvement again on Cinebench. Superposition at 1080p uh, scored a 9% improvement over the stock K. Unigen Valley again at 1080p scored a 6.8% improvement over the K. And then finally, our Final Fantasy benchmark, which was at 1080p with uh, medium uh, settings, scored a 0.65% improvement over the K. 
So what we can see from all these uh, results, some of which of course are professional benchmarks, some of which are standard single core, some which are multi-core, some which are gaming style. We can see that overall the average increase is about 5.6%. So it is, a, it is a reasonable improvement in terms of uh, performance. 5.6% uh, is not to be sniffed at, I guess. But the main thing here is that you're actually adding 10% of power and you're needing more cooling to get that 5.6%. So that's something that you need to be aware of. Even with custom water cooling on the KS, that does become uh, restricted by thermals if you run something like a blender test uh, for an extended period of time and our blender test does take in excess of one hour so that was hitting uh, the point where the CPU needed to thermal throttle down. Uh, even uh, multiple Cinebench uh, runs back to back, which I tend to do 30 minutes of, that was also hitting the thermal threshold even on custom water on the KS. And also the KS does come with a premium price over the K product. So you'll have to weigh up for you whether you want to pay the extra for the cooling, pay the extra for the, for the CPU itself, uh, and pay the extra for the power draw to get this 5.6% uh, worth of performance. So for overclocking and tuning of this particular CPU, I wanted to max out uh, the best possible gaming profile, stroke low core count profile, which would obviously be good for things like CAD, photo editing, and these type of applications that don't need many cores. Of course, very good for gaming as well. And then I also wanted to create a profile that was very good in your massively multi-threaded workloads, such as game development, uh, rendering, and simulation as examples. Both of these types of profile will be available in my 8-pack gaming bundles, which I've developed in conjunction with this video and in conjunction with the research that I did for this video into how best tune the CPU. As you'll see, you don't really want to leave this CPU at stock when you can improve performance, power draw, and therefore temperatures by manually tuning it. So, the gaming profile I came up with for this was a 5.9 gigahertz static overclock with a plus two ratio of TVB. Now to gain this, we did the hyperthreading disabled, and I disabled also eight of the efficiency cores. Of course, none of these features are needed in gaming. And I must note that if you do turbo velocity boost overclocking with plus two with HT on, the system was unstable anyway. But, but in this case, it wouldn't help for what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, turning off half, the CPU uh, cores reduced power draw, and of course it reduced uh, temperatures, so it can boost higher for much longer. And I ensured a higher boost clock for even longer still by setting a boost offsetting the temperature for 10 degrees. And I found this was stable throughout all workloads. So essentially that means that the CPU was not clocking down each boost till 10 degrees higher. So of course the maximum boost on the CPU, 5.9 plus two is 6.1. And then when you get to a certain temperature, which is 10 degrees higher than it would normally be to switch down, it's then going to six. And the lowest possible, no matter what workloads, it's going to 5.9. And obviously you gamers know that it's actually the speed of the CPU when you're playing your games that makes mo the main difference to the actual frame rate. So what we're doing with this is we're keeping 6.1 as absolutely long as possible. We're keeping six as long as possible and then the minimum is 5.9, which is really affecting your gaming uh, to positives. And we're doing this essentially by really controlling the power draw of the CPU and we're controlling the temperature of the CPU. Now, what was the power draw after all these little tweaks? We found that the power draw dropped to only 237 watts, obviously from uh, the maximum of 405 watts, which is a 70% less power draw. And what we also found when even running very heavy multi-threaded on this kind of uh, a CPU tweak, we saw only 72 degrees on the CPU, which was 39 degrees cooler. And I guess uh, it could be said really with these type of tweaks, we no longer needed the custom loop in effect. Yeah, we would have added a few degrees extra to the temperatures, but it would be well below the 100 degrees th uh, threshold and maybe only pushing at a maximum of 78 to 80 degrees. So not only have we improved power draw, we've improved performance in gaming, we've pro improved temperatures, we've also made it that we need, we don't need to spend as much on our cooling and it's easier to fit it in a smaller case as well. So what was the improvement in uh, the KS overclocked gaming profile uh, versus uh, the KS stock profile? Obviously our render test 
took longer because that's a multi-core test taking 24% longer, but my goal here wasn't to improve the render test. Uh, the Fire Strike graphics, however, which is a gaming test, that was 16.5% improved over the stock K, which is exactly what I was trying to gain. Uh, the 3D Mark Fire Strike physics uh, dropped 19.6%, but again, physics is a multi-core thing, uh, and again, something that I wasn't trying to uh, improve. Uh, multi-core tinny bench again dropped but again it's multi-core so it's not not really what this profile is about single core uh, saw a 0.4 percent improvement superposition saw a 2.7 percent improvement valley saw a 2.3 percent improvement and final fantasy saw, saw a 0.3 percent improvement so overall uh, the gaming uh, profile gains were 4.5 percent versus stock in the gaming benchmarks uh, and also, uh, obviously, this is causing a large reduction in performance on the multi-threaded uh, task. But anyone who wants to do a multi-threaded task would obviously, uh, having bought one of my bundles, would then go into the BIOS and switch to the multi-threaded profile to gain the benefit there. This undoubtedly is definitely the best performance gaming-wise you can get out of this CPU. Uh, and at the same time, uh, obviously it does have the expense of multi-core, but at the same time you're reducing power draw, you're reducing uh, the effective cooling that you need by reducing the overall thermal envelope and the TDP. So now we've gone over the single core uh, settings and results, let's go over the multi-core uh, settings. Now for multi-core, uh, the maximum overclock I could get on this stable was 5.6 gigahertz, uh, with all the e-cores at 4.5 gigahertz. So essentially that meant that I could get around 100 megahertz more on the p-cores and around 100 megahertz more on the e-cores than I could on the standard K version. So Intel essentially have uh, given us better silicon for the KS than they did uh, with the K and that's been proven out by the higher boost clocks of course when you're trying to take it higher for gaming and also for the higher uh, maintained clocks acro across all the cores when you're trying to take it a little bit higher for multi-threaded workloads. Now, this uh, particular profile uh, resulted in only uh, using 278 watts when doing all multi-core work uh, and also had a peak temperature uh, of 76C again when doing all uh, multi-threaded work. And again, this was a huge improvement over the stock profile. Uh, basically, you saved 46% in power draw whilst getting 31% cooler uh, results. And again, with this particular uh, profile, you wouldn't need to use a custom loop. A uh, 360 AIO would work fine. It maybe wouldn't be as low as 76 degrees uh, under maximum load, but it would certainly not be more than mid 80s, which again is a perfect result. So what uh, was the performance of the multi-core uh, profile against your stock settings? Well, the Blender uh, render test had a 1% improvement. Uh, the 3D Mark graphics test, again, that's uh, more of a, where the gaming profile would work better, had a 1.3% reduction. Uh, Fire, Mark, Fire Strike Physics, however, had a 1.6% improvement, that being a multi-core test. Uh, Cinebench multi-core, 0.7% improvement. Cinebench single core had an 8% reduction because again, this is not a gaming, it's not a single core uh, type profile. We had a slight reduction in uh, superposition, which is gaming, slight reduction uh, in Unigen Valley, which is gaming. And finally, Final Fantasy, we also had a slight reduction, which is gaming. So what you can see, basically everything that I targeted this profile in terms of the benchmarks improved. Everything uh, that, that we didn't target obviously had a slight reduction, but the main point is that if you're doing rendering for hours and hours and hours on this CPU or you're doing uh, you know, simulation, something like this, where you're just letting it go, you are saving a lot in terms of the power, you're saving a lot in terms of what you have to uh, spend on cooling whilst actually getting more performance. And obviously, you, in all honesty, you don't need as high a PSU either, uh, and, and it's gonna also help the longevity of the VRM on the motherboard and all these kind of things by pulling such an amount less power and, and staying a lot less in terms of temperatures. Okay, so finally, what's the eight pack conclusion on this product? Who is this CPU for? Well, in stock guys, it's for enthusiasts and gamers with a custom water cooling loop or what the absolute maximum performance that Intel has to offer. It's also, of course, for overclockers who are willing to do a little bit of tweaking, tuning uh, to extract every little degree of performance out of the CPU. Or, of course, they can buy an eight pack bundle and we'll do the same and you, all you have to do is install it within your case. 
Will I be using this CPU in 8-pack bundles and systems? Of course I will, uh, and as I've suggested, we'll be upgrading my bundles to include this CPU with the variety of profiles. So you, if you don't want to uh, do the overclocking yourself, can buy a pre-configured bundle. Also, with this being uh, the best CPU Intel has to offer, it will go into my system at launch, just so that uh, we can say we have the flagship product and the absolute best performance. Uh, and again, 8-pack systems will come with the two profiles so the end user uh, can switch between them. And there is a video on our YouTube channel, uh, link in the description below, that tells you the details of how to switch the profiles. And it is indeed pretty easy. With a few keystrokes, you can switch the profile for the particular task that you're going to undertake uh, you know the next time you boot the system uh, i guess the the main uh, things other than that to say about the cpu is that you are paying uh, quite a percentage extra uh, for only a very small percentage in improvement over indeed the 14900k or even the 13900ks uh, and that's really the, the main, if you like, uh, negative point about the CPU. It won't be for, uh, for everyone, of course, but if you are uh, new to uh, Z790 and you are new to Intel, uh, this 1700 socket, then you'd probably want to buy this CPU if you are looking for the absolute elite tier uh, performance. And finally, of course, in true 8-pack style, don't like the video, don't subscribe to mine or Overclocker's socials, and certainly don't subscribe to this channel. But do, of course, buy my bundles.